using Lewis symbols to represent compounds containing polyatomic ions. For instance, we could draw Lewis symbols for the ions in sodium oxide. The ions are Na plus and O2 minus. And the Lewis symbol for the sodium ion is Na with zero dots since it lost its valence electron to get the plus one charge. And the Lewis symbol for the oxygen ion, sorry, the oxide ion, has eight valence electrons and a charge of minus two because it started out with six and gained two electrons. Since the formula of sodium oxide is Na2O, we show the two sodium ions. And we arrange them like this because the ionic bond is the attraction between the positively charged cations, the sodiums, and the negatively charged anion, the oxide. The sodium ions will repel each other and be attracted to the oxide. That's why I have drawn the sodiums on either side of the oxide ion. So that was a little review. Now let's look at an ionic compound that contains a polyatomic ion, like Na2CO3. Just as in the sodium oxide, the sodium carbonate contains two Na plus ions, which is brackets around an Na with zero dots because it gave up its one valence electron and a plus one charge. We also have to show the Lewis structure for carbonate. And the formula and charge of a carbonate ion is CO3 2 minus. So we're going to make the Lewis structure for carbonate by going through our four steps. First, we count the electrons. Each carbon contributes four. There's one carbon total, so four from carbon. Each oxygen contributes six. Six times three is 18. And with this negative two charge, since each electron has a minus one charge, we have to add two electrons. That gives us a grand total of 24 electrons. Next, we draw the skeleton. The skeleton picks a central atom that has the greatest number of unpaired electrons in its Lewis symbol, and that central atom has one sigma bond to each of the peripheral atoms. The Lewis symbol for carbon has four unpaired electrons. The Lewis symbol for oxygen only has two unpaired electrons. That means carbon will be the central atom in the skeleton. So there is the skeleton of our carbonate anion. Now to determine the number of lone pairs. Our original count was 24 electrons. We have to subtract one pair for each bond. We have one, two, three bonds. So we subtract six electrons from our 24, and we have 18 electrons, which means nine lone pairs. Now we go on to checking for the octet rule. Each oxygen has three lone pairs and a sigma bond. So each oxygen is seeing a complete octet. Carbon, on the other hand, has only six electrons. Sad face. So we're going to turn one of the oxygen lone pairs into a pi bond. Here's the resonance structure we get from using the oxygen on the left. Since it's an ion, we put it in brackets with the charge in the upper right-hand corner. Here's the resonance structure we get if we take a lone pair from the middle oxygen. And here is the resonance structure you get if you take the lone pair from the oxygen on the right. When we're showing the Lewis diagram for the compound, we only need to show one resonance structure of the anion. Thus, we have our two sodium ions surrounding the carbonate.
Now as an exercise, you try doing this for KNO3 and NH4Cl. Pause your video while you work, then unpause it to check your answers against mine. There's the one for KNO3, the K plus ion, just a K in brackets with no dots because it had one valence electron that it lost, and the nitrate ion, which has 24 electrons. Note that only one resonance structure of the nitrate ion is shown. NH4Cl consists of an NH4 plus polyatomic cation and a Cl minus anion. We do the easy one first, the Cl minus. That's just a Cl with eight dots in brackets and a negative one charge. Because chlorine is in group 17, so it had seven valence electrons, we added one to make the negative charge, now it's eight. For the NH4+, plus, nitrogen has five, each hydrogen has one, one times four is four, but because of the plus one charge, that means we have to subtract one electron. That gives us eight electrons total. So, by the time we have drawn our skeleton, we've used up all of them. And I'm going to just take this chloride ion and move it to the right, because we've been doing this in the format, first the cation and then the anion although it doesn't really matter. So there's your Lewis structure for ammonium chloride. 